humans have sent spaceships to further galaxies. Now we need to know more about ourselves. Only by expanding our own understanding will we be able to confront health issues and expect to prosper and survive. In India, life science is booming, that's for sure. And we can expect great perspectives here and a lot of exchanges and partnering uh, that we won't uh, have in another country. We need to team up with uh, labs in India that have an international scope in several of the uh, fields of life sciences, and not only in disease, but also in fundamental research. But uh, India is like a really fantastic place to come and do research. This building only opened in the summer. I don't know many institutes in Europe where, that are still expanding to this level. Throughout those four years uh, that I've been here, we can uh, definitely say that uh, four labs, Indo-French labs in biology, have been set up. French science has been, you know, an example of this sort of interdisciplinary work, uh, from evolution to the physics of active processes that come from the French system. Life and health issues are tremendous in India. santé partagée entre la France et l'Inde, même si évidemment on a des spécificités euh, et donc ce qui permet d'avoir des complémentarités dans les approches. We are decent uh, lab. We have the genome sequence of human, we have genome sequence of the parasite, we have genome sequence of the mosquito. My daughter had a dengue this year. 40 of her classmates had dengue. One of them died. Bye. And dengue, as you know, is a major problem in India. We officially, if you look at the number of dengue cases, we say about 30,000 cases a year. But world experts estimate these cases to about 37 million cases of dengue. After 125 years of discovery of TB, or 110 years of discovery of malaria, we still don't have a working vaccine for TB. Donc, uh, on peut potentiellement connaître des épidémies de dengue en Europe, notamment favorisées par les flux de passagers. Toutes les conditions sont réunies pour qu'on connaisse des épidémies de dengue dans la prochaine décennie, au moins dans le sud de l'Europe. Parasites and viruses and bacteria, their world is no less clever than our world. In fact, they are, in some sense, if I can use the term, they are cleverer than us. The parasite see or the, the, the pathogen seems to be winning the race because they are resistant to all the drugs that we can throw at them. We started, of course, to focus on the cell and now we need to go a little uh, wider. And when you take neurosciences, we need now to see this big picture from the cell to the whole brain. I'm a developmental neurobiologist, which means that I study how the brain develops. The brain is made up of a network of cells, and the network of cells communicate with each other. Each time a neuron is active, it's, it's a sort of a light. And so if you, if you can see the patterns of light and the different patterns of light, that's how the brain works, like say, you know, flash bulbs. If I was going to move my hand to the right to reach for something, you would see flash bulbs go off in a particular pattern. There was a time when people studied the computers in order to sort of understand how the human brain might work. And to build smarter computers, you have to understand how the human brain does it. For example, object recognition. And we are much better at doing it than the best computer. Words. You know, you can write them in the most degraded way or the most twisted way and we can kind of recognize them for what they are, but the computer is, just cannot. A young scientist getting into science today is spoiled for choice. He or she can ask such fascinating questions. So this excites me no end. One of the best beam lines uh, in the world, especially the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. I would be doing the same work in France, but with much better facilities. The impact of research in life sciences, of Indo-French uh, research, is always global because, of course, when you start collaborating bilaterally, 
uh, you're going to make uh, the world aware of your research. We worked on basic biology of malaria as well as vaccines for malaria. And uh, Pasteur has a long tradition where I will be working, the Institute Pasteur in Paris. has a long tradition of work in the tropical diseases. Uh, and they're interested in expanding and building a new unit in malaria. There is a lot of malaria in India. To get your vaccine candidate manufactured, there's a growing clinical trials industry where we can get tested. And we can do this all at much lower cost than is possible in Europe or in the developed world. Biosimilars is where we have a, a large molecule like an antibody or a vaccine and these molecules have been patented, many of them have been patented. When the patents run out, then you develop generics of these biomolecules which are called biogenerics. Which uh, combines a regional hospital dedicated to high level medical activity. So the first pacemaker was done almost 40 uh, yeah, no, plus years ago and to date 3,823 three pacemakers have been implanted through this program. If a solution is not affordable, it is not a solution. If I buy the ready-made one in one piece, I have to pay them twice, twice the cost by us doing it here, we save nearly 50% of the cost. So it is a, a plant uh, which uh, is called Sisampella. Uh, it's a flowering shrub and just pre-flowering leaves have a lot of anti-dengue activity. So, and it is safe because it has been used in Ayurveda but not in the name of dengue but for other symptoms, but it has a very potent anti-dengue activity. You do need fundamental research. If you don't understand how a cell works, you're not going to have medication or molecules uh, curing uh, and interacting with the cell. This is the floor for INSTEM, which is the Institute of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. How they're regulated, how they're perturbed in diseases, a whole variety of different aspects. Yeah, I work here on stem cells. I'm part of a CIFIPRA grant, which is an Indo-French collaborative grant. And, uh, I'm working particularly on a, the regulation of stem cells in a muscle disease that affects children. The cell, as you said, is the irreducible unit of a living system. But what happens inside a cell that makes it living is something that I think informs the way living systems are built. Understanding the fundamental aspects of a, of a system automatically leads to good innovation and, uh, and technology and, uh, and application. There's a long history of uh, vaccine research and needless to say, we'll be very eager to uh, you know, collaborate with the scientists in France. We have a, a growing uh, population which is very young. And I think we are at a stage in, in biology in the Indian context where it's way too early to ask for application. I got really fascinated by this uh, ability of uh, scientists to be able to ask this what we call a global question. Every researcher in the world likes to see applications of what they found. And uh, when you take all the Nobel Prizes in Physiology and Medicine, you have applications of what they found uh, fundamentally. Fundamental research is the need of the art and must be the emphasis of science in India today. And in a sense, that's a huge opportunity, I would argue, for the whole world.